Oh, it's a wet old day today, so I'll make a few videos. I'm nearly done now. I must have spent an hour there making them, and I hope you enjoy them. Uh, heat pumps, uh, heat pumps. And soon time for a cup of tea. Now, I went into the chemist shops around asking for a little bottle of ether. Of ether. And it used to come in a little small uh, 50 ml bottle. And it grew cap on it. And my father would get it for starting tractors. Starting engines. It's in Easy Start. If you smell it, you'll smell it. But Easy Start has other components, including a lubricant. And I don't know, will it work? A way of getting the same experience is to spill methylated spirits on your hand and as it, as it evaporates, it will make your hand cold. Now, if you spill ether, ether on your hand, you'd feel this freezing sensation. If you put a lid of a jam pot, a clean lid on your hand and put water under it in a bubble, you know the way it'll stay there with, with, uh, with the, the menacus of it, it'll sit there and spill the ether on as the ether, uh, or even put it on a book, if you had a book, as the ether, as the ether uh, uh, evaporates, the water will freeze into ice. Maybe I'd get some yet. I'll have a look on the internet to see can I get a bottle of ether. Just I often bought it for the tractor, as I say. I think it was used for an, for an, an anaesthetic as well. I don't know. So I've tried to put common sense on these heat pumps. And we see everyone saying they're very expensive to run and fix and all that, but they're very hard on electricity. And this raises the question, could they be just a scam? Are they a colourable fraud to make people think they work when in actual fact what they have is uh, electricity powered heating? I make the point as well that government probably knows this and the industry probably knows it because they will not install it for you with any grant unless your house is fully insulated. So if your house is fully insulated, ordinary convection electric heaters might do just as good. So now, if you look at it, here's the heat pump here. Supposing that the refrigerant, there are different ones and it might be possible to get it out of a fridge, but ether would be the obvious thing if we could get it. We might get it yet, but I don't think it's banned or anything like that. But anyway, we say they use an ether. What happens with the ether is it's, it's, it's boiling point is 34 degrees. So if there's any little heat in here, it will easily evaporate. And as it evaporates, it will cause cold out here. And it will use the fan to draw the heat that's in the air to dissipate that cold. So you're freezing, you're making the air outside colder. Okay, now then the, the evaporated stuff is pumped in through a pipe into the house, and when it's in here, it's compressed. There must be a stop valve, so it must pump the the, the semi gaseous or the gas that's there or the evaporate uh, through. And when it gets enough within the pipes, and the pipes are sufficiently hot or sufficiently uh, uh, full of it, they block this one and pump the gas in so that you heat you heat. The pipes. Now you can experience this yourself if you have a bicycle pump. <laughs> you feel it getting hot down at the bottom. As you compress air, you give off heat. You'll also see in cold weather jars of gas outside houses, and even well, no, not in warm weather, in jars of gas and frost developing around the bottom of them. So you'll see the frost around here, and you can know the level of the gas. The remaining gas is liquid in the cylinder and it freezes. Have you that now? So as you let the pressure off a, of a liquid and it converts to gas, it pulls the heat out of the surrounding surface. As you compress it back into a gas, it gets hot. So wherever they're filling those cylinders or wherever they're compressing the gas, there's a lot of heat goes off as a byproduct. Do you understand that? Now I'll go over that again. The, the volatile gas is here. It is, it, it, it's now in the, in, the, in the form of a gas or very close to it. It's pumped through, it had, this is my only way how I would design it. I'm not saying this is how it is. There'll be something all underneath. Oh no, that's not how we do it at all. We have to apply common sense to this. You fill this pipe with, these pipes, with a, 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 um, a, a gas, and then you stop the valve here and you pump this gas so that it converts to a liquid. When you do that, you give off great amounts of heat. But you're using electricity to pump the gas. 
when the gas comes back here, when, it, when the liquid comes back, it's now a liquid. So it was a gas, it's compressed into a liquid. And when it comes back here, it's fed out, out here. And when it gets out here, the pressure is released. That immediately would cause a frosting, particularly in cold weather, of the, of the, 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 the radiator out here. This, this big fan is to draw air from outside and help to reduce the amount of frost and freezing on the pipe and dissipate it into the air. That process also takes up electricity. So what you're doing is you're compressing a, a, a volatile substance into a liquid. You're letting the liquid back outside the house. When it gets outside the house, you're letting your letting it uh, uh, when it gets outside the house you're letting off the pressure of it and as you let off the pressure of it it causes frost cold and that cold would cause a big frosty lump on your heat pump but it's this fan which is a slow moving fan comparatively pump, pumps local air through it and so you re re uh, vaporize the, the 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 liquid inside if you had very, very bad frost, if you had like you have in parts of America and Canada where you get minus, minus 20 degrees centigrade, then obviously it would be harder to do that. But I presume that the, even at that, it's enough to convert this. I'm a bit weak on that. I don't know. But in the Irish climate, anyway, this has to be how it works. So I'm now inviting those who say I'm wrong to come on and debate this. But this has to be how it works. And when you count <clears throat> the amount of electricity to, com to uh, compress this, to work the valves, let the liquid back out, run a pump to keep it uh, circulating, and then recompress it again, you're talking about a system which is run on electricity. And this explains why the government has been telling people with new houses and new systems that this will cost 100 euros a month on electricity. And people think that, uh, oh, sure, there's only winter for four, six months. So you're talking about 600 euros for, for clean, free energy. When, in fact, these things can't easily be turned off. And that makes a lot of sense, too, because if you turn them off, the whole system would become neutralized. It will take time to get it divided. You have to have the... You have to probably uh, drain out the liquid out of this part and leave that vacant and have it here and have it in a reservoir. I'll just draw in what I would imagine a reservoir would be and it'll be down here. So when you come in and switch it on in the of a cold evening after being away for a week, you won't get heat for quite a while. And many houses have also fireplaces and other forms of heating. Do you understand? So this could be a reservoir here. And this means that there is no way that this system is any different to an ordinary electric heater, except you just don't have the, the dryness in the air or oil fired or anything else, because it's ultimately fired nowadays by diesel oil in the emergency power stations. If you're going to heat your house with diesel oil produced electricity, why not heat it with diesel oil or paraffin to start with? That's my understanding. And this is borne out by several of the comments I got on my video from people in England and all that who see all of this. And that's a complex enough system. And to make it on a home scale rather than an industrial scale will involve a lot of breakdowns and a lot of technical know-how. It looks green. It will fool some people. As I say, you can fool some other people all the time. But when it comes to an old farmer with cows, uh, he asked the question, I mean, why not pump the water up to a very tall tank, let it fall down where it would generate electricity through a turbine and use that turbine to heat the house? Well, the reason is the, few, the power you put in is less than the power you get out. The laws of thermodynamics says you can't make energy. You can convert it from one form to another. And in practical re world, that conversion uses waste a little bit of power. So if you get a good three phase, uh, five horsepower electric motor and you feed it in, it has a power factor. If you have no power or no weight on it at all, there's little electricity being used, but there is a little with the resistance of the air and there's a little in the, in the bearings. 
and that is why some of these flywheels wonders are all said to be to try to make them run on magnetic bearings that's a different story they are never going to come to anything either it's all pie in the sky when you die and pay tax so so that's the story uh, that's my view of it this is just another extension of the green woke cultural marxist fraud the deluded people they probably think they're right they don't mind they're encouraging you to do this but the bills are so astronomical a lot of people are turning them off for good and those who have fireplaces are lighting a fire and that's the situation but i'm open to I'm open to question. Now, another man who knows a bit got on to me and he says, you're not counting in the wood pellets. Wood pellet stoves, which are totally different to this, are a great idea. I'm at a loss about them, but they are a fuel in the end of the day. And they have to be carted round and made and produced by fossil fuel. So it looks to me like the wonders and the great, great news and the great... Uh, convenience of fossil fuel is being seized on by an ignorant population and a more ignorant opportunistic government and companies which try to make money by doing this you're currently planning applications in for this nonsense for a condenser uh, um, a substitute power station oil storage facilities gas storage facilities over in County Galway which are doing nothing only taking up the slack from the power that was shut down by the Greens and by the energy regulator in order to produce this green thing oh we'll force the wind we'll force the green electricity on the people but of course the green electricity doesn't work it's not there most of the time and neither does the solar panels and you're really back to the time of the horse because the problem with the horse was it took a lot of land to feed your pair of horses and your pony for your trap for going off to shop and then off to town it took a lot of land and now you have the very same situation again you need a lot more land for your solar panels competing with food and you need a lot more land for your wind turbines and when you have all that done you have neither land nor power and you have the most expensive electricity in the world in a cold damp country i'm not long back from italy where it's warm it's dry and yet it's ireland with the green voters that have brought this whole situation about we'll see you back for something else comment on the needs more experience may be needed I have discovered the whole scams. I have exposed the wind, the solar, the electric cars, and now I'm exposing the heat pumps. And the data centers are next target. All are scams. All are Ponzi schemes. In as far as they possibly can, using the ignoramuses of Irish people who agreed to this in the ballot box and the decent Irish people and there are many who watch my channel who are looking on at it and can't do anything powerless to deal with it or, or, or anything I went to court trying to force them to carry out the proper engineering assessments I didn't get on very well and there's a case before uh, the European Court of Justice case 727 of 2022 too, and there should be a result there and it looks to me that the court cannot rule against the friends of the Irish environment so they're putting it on the long finger and I think the scare running through the Irish government and maybe some European governments as they realise the whole thing is illegal and that's the efforts that I and others have done to try and force them to obey the law. We'll see you back for time. Thank you very much. This should all be assessed. There should be a house up on the hill with no heating People should be asked to live in it and run it on the heat pump. The electricity going in should be monitored only for the heat pump. There should be a second supply for domestic purposes and that should be counted and how much electricity it took to run it for the year and then how much electricity it took, uh, how much electricity it takes to run an ordinary house for a year. Take the difference and see is the heat pump a negative or positive in in the consumption of electricity and the emission of greenhouse gases and they won't do that and they won't do that because i believe i'm right they know it's a scam it's only another way of getting business and all that and when all this comes to knowledge and when the banks and the people who lend to these schemes realize that they're all a fraud where are we going to be economically i won't answer that for you now comment on the need good luck and bye bye thank you